Thanks, Martin. And these techniques are just fascinating. That memory palace, Bruno, the approach that uh, he, he took into exploring this fascinating organ. But one of the elements of Freemasonry is know thyself. By meditating, by doing inner research, um, how much have you discovered about yourself? Well, yes, of course, I've learned many things uh, over the years. This is an ongoing process. And, of course, I myself have, have changed as uh, this has continued. So rather than go through a, a whole list from the beginning, I'll summarise what the most recent discoveries uh, I've, I've made are. And these actually do relate to the art of memory. So the earliest document we have, which has a, a guide to creating memory images and forming a memory palace, is in a, an ancient Hellenic text uh, called Disoi Logai. Yeah, that means opposing uh, views. It's a, a technique in philosophy when you, you contemplate the opposite opinion or, or, or uh, the uh, opinion that you, you wouldn't uh, normally take. Now, this document says the first key to memory is uh, paying attention and being interested. So if you don't remember something, it's probable that there's an area of you that isn't seeking to remember that. Well, that's really very interesting, isn't it? So if you look at yourself and you, you look at the things you don't remember, maybe, um, maybe some people watching this don't remember dates or don't remember names, or maybe there's certain um, new hobbies that they've decided I'm going to, they're going to do and they, they just forget to do it. Normally, when we, we forget something, we start by looking in our mind, we examine our, our, our head. Maybe if uh, the ancient wisdom I'm talking about is true, we should start by examining our hearts. So for me, it's been a discovery uh, as to what things are obviously uh, not fully connected. And that's actually quite interesting. So what I've discovered is my classification of information that isn't of importance is a lot bigger than most people's. Yeah. So when, when I meet someone and they're talking to me, there's, we all have this. We all think, yeah, yeah, that's not important. That's a, you, we're all looking for the key information. My section of what's uh, important is, is smaller and more focused. So it means that if someone tells me certain information about where they live or their, their life or something like that, often... I'm not recalling it because I'm not connecting on that level. Yeah. And I tend to focus on big things. I tend to focus on plans and achievements and projects. So memory has helped me realize that actually the value in listening to things which are in the present or in the past, which are um, how the person feels yeah. or what uh, is, is going on, the, the detail. It's given me a, a, um, an instruction to pay attention to detail. And, and this is a very important thing. Likewise, if you remove all artificial aids to memory from your life, if you, if you don't use the sat-nav, the second or third time you're going somewhere, if you attempt to just use memory, uh, you start to realize how much you've got out of habit of things. Yeah. So, right, you say, right, I'm not using the calculator anymore. And I'm going to make sure that I always uh, 
rise to a, a challenge. So if, if there's something I need to work out in my mind, I'm going to do it. Yeah. You realise how rusty you are with things. Yeah. Yeah. So I've discovered a few things like that as well. Uh, information that too easy to look up and or too easy to rely on others for. Um, that, that I've discovered a, a few of those of late uh, uh, as well. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, these discoveries will lead to ongoing improvements. <laughs> Brilliant. Martin, oh, thank you so much for the answer so far. Um, we live in a particular time. Uh, COVID-19 has uh, limited our freedom of movement for obvious reasons. Health, we needed to protect the dearest to us, friends, neighbors, and everybody else. But COVID has also brought a complete change in the pattern of everybody's life. Sounds like almost what you were saying. We were just living on an autopilot where everything was just happening as a routine. And that has brought uh, a number of us to, to start you know, new routines or uh, start using different way of communicating, such as video calling, etc. How much has COVID limited your way of working and how much COVID has changed the way that you're approaching your investigation, your meditation and research? First and foremost, um, COVID for me uh, brought an opportunity to do more training. So that was very good. Uh, for me, the lockdowns were actually uh, like retreats. Yeah, um, I tend to run out into the fens in the morning to do my meditation practice. And I think that because of that, I, I feel I've really got out. You know, I, I can yeah. see into the distance, I'm in nature. So during that time of lockdown, uh, I don't think it was uh, as tough for me as it has been for, for some people. Um, the change to work, it was um, quite a... Um, a challenging time and still is a challenging time for me work-wise because obviously I work for a publishing company I, for those who aren't aware I work for Lewis Masonic uh, the, the publishing company and that company um, really specializes in works uh, for Freemasons who haven't been able to meet it's been the, the first time in, in history when uh, that we haven't found, been able to find any way to be able to continue uh, uh, meeting. So it's been a challenge. I've had to do a lot of work and uh, fill in and find ways to adapt and do things and so on. It, it's, it's kind of like trying to uh, function in a, in a blizzard because yeah. one change, you know, with, with COVID and, and Brexit and, and so on, that's, that's been, yeah. uh, it's been <laughs> pretty tough. Now, um, as far as changing ways to do things, it has managed to move many of my meetings to being online like this. And it's wonderful to be able to do that. Uh, it's something I've always tried to encourage previously, but not many people were ready to embrace the technology uh, until now. So that, that's, that's been very good. And I, I've uh, managed to engage with many, many people this way and it's it's become a video call has become a norm for me daily um in a way that it never did before uh, so I, I really like that yeah i i totally agree with you i uh, i in, in my modest opinion uh, covid from this perspective is the butterfly effect that will allow freemasons and professionals to meet much more frequently than before Thanks to the fact that you're willing to meet on a on a video vir on a virtual meeting room, rather yes. than fly and do things, I totally agree with you. Totally agree. Now, just to continue with the COVID, uh, yes. I've tried to be balanced in my response to it. So, uh, this is a, a genuine illness, and um, it particularly um, picks on the vulnerable or the elderly. So I've kept all the disciplines in place which have been recommended by the government uh, exactly in place. Um, so I, I'm probably a, a bit more disciplined than most people uh, apply for awareness. And, um, but around me, there are people who are 
uh, in my opinion, going one way or the other. Um, some people are very, very scared and um, are, uh, so much so that the actual fear, I think, is, is affecting them. And I think it has affected people. And there are other people uh, who have become very blasé. Um, maybe they're, they're young and healthy yeah. and they don't feel it affect them. So they're ignoring rules, uh, not knowing that it's not them. Exactly. And these messages about people further. So right. I've taken it as my, um, my goal to set a good example of a balanced, positive attitude. I have lost friends during this time. Um, people I know, people I've been in lodge with, people I've, I've met business-wise, people I've published books um, for. And not just from COVID, though some, some of these people did actually pass away due to COVID. But I also think it's a time of stress for people, and I think that's made a difference. Yeah. And, and it's, it is something which... Um, many people are, are dealing with. So I, I take this as a, a reminder to value the people around me, yeah. uh, to be kind and to do, be the best person I can be, and, and also just to remember that my time is also temporary, so to utilise it, it fully and... Um, and send blessings to those who are on the next part of their, their journey. Wonderful words. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, the, and thanks for reminding uh, that we lost brethren, neighbors, friends, family as well. A very nice thought. Thank you, Martin. Martin, we're approaching the end of our conversation, even though I will keep everybody listening to you for the next 12 hours, but we can't. So we have to... Uh, uh, lead to an end. However, I have a couple of questions to close this uh, this talk with you. The first one: You're an author. You're you're a creative person. Can I ask you what is your next project? If you can share it with us. Ah, yes. So you probably noticed that many of the projects recently have been memory based. Yes. Uh, there was the the Mosaic Palace book, which is about the history of Freemasonry and memorization. There was a, uh, the translation of Alexander Dixon, Bruno Student's uh, important memory manuals. And then came uh, Robert Flood's uh, yeah. Guide to Mnemonics. This is a, yeah. a beautiful practical renaissance. Most recently, there have been some memory cards. Now, this is a, a, a restoration of an old practice. Um, if you were around in the Enlightenment or in the Renaissance, you would probably be aware that you could purchase little books or uh, cards for your self-improvement. And you put them in your, your pocket. You might work with your partner or a friend on this. And each one had an emblem. And the goal was to memorize each one of these emblems and to contemplate them. They normally have a story to them. And this was a self-improvement technique. There would be lessons in there or challenges for you to do. So the, the death of Hades yeah. uh, was uh, the, a pack, which was a uh, regeneration of this practice. But now approaching, we have a, another uh, project which relates to the Bruno memory methods. As you can see, I've, uh, I've been practicing those. And it's, it's something just that I, I think needs to be done uh, to restore some of those, those practices in, in the near future. So watch this, this space. Now, I don't want to say more, and I'll tell you why. Too many people speak it out. When I get an inspiration, I keep it here and let it, let it warm and let it develop uh, until it just has to flow and uh, this is the way that I found works works best for me sounds good sounds good and therefore I'm sure that more people will be watching this space like you suggested last question Martin and I would like to use this as 
connecting to the first one that I asked you earlier. I asked you who did inspire you at the beginning of your journey. But who is inspiring Martin Fox today? Ah, yes. Um, so, as you know, I still follow the, the path laid out by Franz Baden. And yeah. so his teachings and his methods are still a constant inspiration to me. But also, as you've heard recently, there are, there are many memory masters which I, I'm studying under uh, through their, their original texts now. But I found that inspiration, as I continue to live my life, comes a lot more easily to me. And if I watch carefully, almost everyone and everything around me has a lesson. So if I want to learn to, to concentrate better, I can, I can watch the birds of prey with their hunting. If I, if I want to uh, learn to be more practical, I can spend time around someone who's really got that skill. So uh, nowadays, I think everyone I meet is an inspiration in some way, whether I'm learning from what they're doing right or whether I'm learning from some of the mistakes they're making. Wow. Brilliant. Martin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much also for being so open and honest in your response. Um, I've been learning in the past from uh, your lectures. Uh, I'm learning now during our conversation. I'm sure we'll have more opportunity in the future. So thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for the efforts that you make because it's thanks to people like you and your work that we have the opportunity to learn about masters such as Bruno, Flood and others. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time and I hope we will be meeting very soon. Thank you very much Antonio. It has been an honor.